All right, so today we're talking about utilizing augmented reality and text-to-speech to build our own Pokedex. black and berry it's evidence that this pokemon mistook the intensity of its charge okay so for those of you who don't know a pokedex is basically an item in the tv show pokemon in which you're able to look at a pokemon it'll visually display more information about that pokemon and also utilize text to speech to tell you that information so we're going to build the same thing utilizing augmented reality on our phone Before we get started, just want to say, not endorsed by Pokemon, uh, this is all just an experiment trying out different things with technology. So, firstly, the data. We need to find a couple of pieces of data. So, first we need our image targets, we need the information that we're going to show in the augmented space, we need the information that we're going to show uh, in the text-to-speech, and we also need the 3D models. So, what I've done here is I've gone to the Pokemon.com forward slash US forward slash Pokedex, which is the official site as far as I'm aware. And what I've effectively done is I've taken these images here, so like a Bulbasaur, of Charmander, Squirtle, and uh, had Eevee and Snorlax as well, and Pikachu. And I've taken those images and I've used those as image targets. So we're going to go through image targets in a sec. If we go into Bulbasaur here as an example, we can see here a little description and then some height, weight, category, and abilities. So I've used this description here as our text-to-speech content. I've used this information here uh, to show in an augmented space. And then the 3D model that comes with it, I've gone to free3d.com and just search for Pokemon and you get heaps of Pokemon. There, there is a lot of free uh, Pokemon assets out there. Again, not officially endorsed by Pokemon itself, but uh, great for just little test experiments. But that's where I've obtained all the information from for this project. Okay, so next we need to get the uh, actual image targets, the recognition going. So I've utilized Vuforia here. If you don't have an account, just register, it's free. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm logging into our account here. First thing you need to do is utilize, get a development key. I'm not gonna go through this process, but we have a developing develop key. Uh, so it's a free, free account. And then in target managers, we wanna add a database, just a standard device database. Uh, I've called it Pokedex here. And inside here, uh, we want to go through and add our specific target. So you want to add a target, you want to use single image, upload the image that we've taken from the Pokemon website, put in a width, I've put in 20 centimeters, uh, so 0.2 in these cases. And then the name, I've called them the number of Pokemon, like the Pokedex entry. Uh, so we've got here 143, 133, uh, 001, and so on. So we want to add all those targets in, and then we want to download the database so that we're ready to pull them into Unity. Okay, so next we now need to set up a Unity project. So we're just going to create a new project, and we just want a 3D project. I'm going to call it Pokedex. And I'm just going to store this for now on my desktop, um, and I'm just going to call it Pokedex app like that and we want to hit create okay so once unity has finished loading what we want to do is uh, bring in a couple of pieces so firstly we want to jump into the build settings into project settings and we want to make sure in the XR settings that Vuforia augmented reality is supported is ticked uh, along with that in the actual scene itself we want to go to Vuforia engine and bring in an AR camera and make sure to import the asset Okay, so once Vuforia is finished importing, make sure to go to your sample scene here and delete the main camera out of the scene because we only want to have the AR camera. And then what we need to do is we need to bring in the text-to-speech fun functionality as well. So uh, on the Unity Asset Store, there's this asset called Easy Text-to-Speech. Uh, pretty easy to use, uh, only five bucks, so it's pretty cheap. So I'm gonna open this one in Unity and inside here we get to the Asset Store. We wanna import that asset as well. Okay, so now we need to bring in the image targets and actually have things popping up. So under the AR camera, we want to bring in Vuforia and we want to bring in an image target. So we need to import this asset into the project. Should only take a second. And once that's imported, we need to bring in our database from Vuforia itself. 
So we before we download the Unity package, so I'm going to open that one up and it'll bring in the image targets. And so now in our image target here, uh, under database, we can change this to Pokedex and we can choose the Pokemon. So I'm going to choose uh, Bulbasaur to start off with. And so now we have a Bulbasaur image target set up. So what we want to bring in then is the actual Bulbasaur model as well. So we want to set up a 3D models folder and we want to make sure to bring in that 3D model. So under 3D models here, I've downloaded the Bulbasaur one already and we can see the items in here. So I'm just going to drag this folder into the 3D models here and that's going to import the assets into the project. So inside this folder now we have a couple of different Bulbasaurs. I'm going to choose the .fbx version. I'm going to drag that onto the image target. Uh, we want to make sure that we unpack the prefab and we can see the Bulbasaur there now. Um, there's a couple of vines going up into the middle of the air and that's just because that's what this model is. So I'm just going to turn those off for now. So if we look at the image target, we can see that Bulbasaur is now standing on top of the image target. So the other thing we want to do is bring in some related data. Okay, and so to bring some related data in, we need to create an area for it to actually sit on. So uh, just quickly before we do that, it looks like Bulbasaur is actually sitting backwards on this target. So I'm just going to turn him around and then we're going to face the front so we can see him front on. And what we want to do is under the image target, we want to create we want to create a quad and that's going to be like a little background for us. So I'm going to put it sort of next to it. I'm going to make it about two wide and one high, something like that. So we'll get a bit of uh, room. And in the quad itself, we want to put down, uh, so under the 3D object, we want to use the text, text mesh pro, and we need to import that in. And so now we have some 3D text um, showing up. It, it's very large, uh, as you can see. So we just want to reduce the scale down so that it actually fits within our area. So at the moment it's still very large. So let's let's keep on reducing this down. And let's also change this off white because we're not going to be able to see it on our background. So let's change it to black for now. And now it's pretty small. So I'm just going to size this place around and, and get the right size. Okay, so I've set the text to be 40 width, 40 height, 0.01 for all the scales and I've allowed it to auto size. So the minimum size is 20 and the max is 300. So we have four pieces of data uh, that we want to show. So if we go back to the to the site, we have the height, weight, category, and abilities is what we're going to show here. So we just need to have that text in here four times and we just need to move, uh, move each of them around. So we're just going to visually, I mean, you could do this with coordinates, but I'm just going to visually uh, change these. So they're roughly in the four corners. And then we're literally just going to type the content in to these boxes. Okay, so now put all the different pieces of content in. We can actually should be able to now scan the target and be able to see this. So let's hit play. Let's get our target ready. And so now if we scan, we can see the model showing up and we can see some, some text like jittering a bit. And that's because the they're actually all at the same point as the background. So we got to move that out just a little bit. So let's quickly do that. So these text mesh pros, let's not do that. Let's uh, pull the Z position forward. So let's go uh, negative, negative 0.3. So now if we hit play and rescan our model, we can now see that the content is actually readable. Okay, so now we need to build in a function to actually utilize text to speech functionality. So firstly, what we need to do is uh, hook into Vuforia's uh, on found and on lost functions. Basically, we want to know when someone finds a target, we want it to start talking and when they lose it, we want it to stop. So firstly, we're going to open up the default trackable event handler uh, in Vuforia's uh, assets. And I'm just going to open up this file in Sublime and we need to bring in uh, basically the, the actual Unity engine. Oops unity engine dot events because that's going to allow us to when something occurs to then uh, make something happen so in these on lost and on found uh, functions themselves we need to add in uh, basically a, a custom function so i'm going to just call it a cust cust uh, on track found and question mark dot invoke open broke 
And so we want to uh, do that for the on found and also the on lost, uh, but renaming this to have lost in it instead of found. And we want to save that. So now we want to uh, write, write our own script to actually uh, handle the text to speech side. So we're going to create a new folder called scripts. And in here, uh, we're going to create a file and I'm just going to call it uh, easy text to speech. So easy text to speech actually has a couple of demos, which give some really great um, examples on how to utilize the technology. Uh, so I've taken that and I've just sort of tweaked it to, to work to how we need it here. Uh, so we're going to open up this, this file here, just in sublime again. And so in here, uh, we need to bring in a couple of pieces. So I want to also bring in using, oops, using uh, system and also using system.io. And so in the start, what we need to do is we need to call the easy text-to-speech util and we need to initialize it. So that's going to allow it actually to work in, this, in our project. And you also need to call which language you want to utilize. So I'm just using the United States. I haven't particularly played around with the other, uh, other language options. That seems to work pretty well. Uh, I'm also going to make this public. So have a play around. I'd love to know more about uh, how you guys go with different languages. So we're also then going to create two functions to handle when to actually start speaking and when to stop speaking. So I'm going to have one called speak entry and we want to pass through a string. I'm going to call it string to say and basically I get a, uh, I want when, when this occurs, uh, I want to run the speech add uh, function which allows you to basically say what string do you want to for the easy text-to-speech to use. Uh, I might just do a quick error check as well so if for some reason we don't send through some content uh, we'll just default it to say hey that's not a Pokemon and so then we need to do similar so we need a public function uh, which allows us to stop the entry itself. Uh, we don't need to pass through any variables here. And we're going to use utilize the util again and we want to go stop speech function. And then just a slight cleanup as well uh, is a on application quit. Like a type. Uh, we need to bring in the util stop function, basically just to clean it all up. So now we have our easy text-to-speech function ready to go. Okay, so before we continue, there's one last part that I missed in the default trackable events handler, and that is actually uh, having public variables for these uh, on-track found and on-track lost. So up here in the class itself, we need to create a public uh, variable, which is a unity event and we need to call it the same as what we called it down in the functions below. So this would be found and we also need lost. So now when we go in here, this error that's saying that we don't have this uh, not existing will be uh, removed. And we can now go into our image target and we can see when the, uh, the custom on track found and the custom on track lost functions here. So we want to bring in that easy text-to-speech function uh, that we that we wrote uh, in the scripts here. So I'm going to create an empty object and I'm just going to call this uh, text-to-speech manager. And I'm going to assign the script to this object. And so in our image target here, we can add, add functions and we want to drag the text-to-speech manager into here, oops. And so we want the function to be the easy text to speech and the speak entry and the easy text to speech uh, stop speak entry. And in here we can see we've got uh, the area to write text in. So this is where we now need to go back to the website and we want to bring up the description that's here. So we want to copy that and we want to paste that text into here and save that. OK, 
Okay, so we have our text-to-speech, we have our augmented reality going. The last thing that we're missing is the actual frame that goes around the image. So what I have is uh, I just basically Googled for Pokedex itself, uh, found an image online, which was a Pokedex image. Uh, so this image here. And I just went into Photoshop and tried my best to crop out. So not a perfect Photoshop job at all. I'm sure there's many of you that could do a lot better. And uh, but this is what we're running with. So assets, we want to create an image folder. And I'm going to bring in that Pokedex image and make it a sprite. And so with the image now brought in, we need to create a UI, uh, yeah, UI element uh, canvas. And we want the canvas to be a screen space overlay. And so inside the canvas, we want to create another UI element, which is image. And so in the image, we firstly will want to bring in our sprite that we just brought in. We want to set the positioning wise, we want it to stretch left zero, top zero, right zero, bottom zero. And that should now take up the full size. So if we hit play, we should now see a Pokedex that takes up the full screen. Of course, my resolution is not that of a phone, so <laughs> it's a bit squished. And uh, if we scan Bulbasaur, we'll see him. We won't hear him uh, because the text-to-speech is only Android and iOS compatible. It is not uh, compatible with Unity on your computer itself. So you knew, do need to export to in order to hear it. But that is it. We now have our Pokedex uh, overlay. Not beautiful right now, but when it is on your phone, it's great. Uh, we have uh, the ability to scan, see the 3D model, and hear information, see information. So what you would then do if you wanted to have uh, more Pokemon that are scannable is effectively you're copying this image target, you're changing your actual image target itself, changing the content in the text to speech, changing the 3D model that's associated, and changing the content inside each of those text areas to say a different height, to say the different information for each Pokedex entry. But that is effectively how the entire thing is built and how you can build your own version of it. And so that's it guys, we, we've gone through, we've built the Pokedex, we've built out all the augmented reality, text-to-speech. Guys, if you have any other ideas how to utilize text-to-speech with augmented reality, please write them in the comments, I'd love to know. This was just one that came to me one night and I'd love to hear any other thoughts.